uh, an example. So we're, we're porting the entire Amazon uh, database in one go for a customer. So this is a biology book. There's a few hundreds of biology books. And uh, once we're done, you, know, you go into this uh, browser, you log in, you have the, you have the right uh, access. All the Amazon contents will exist in the unified way alongside where your, uh, your internal enterprise contents. So let's search for Amazon. And here it is. They're all neatly organized in the way in which you want the map to your internal search. As you can see, that's a biology book. And uh, this is uh, uh, the cover. So that's the content, actually, in this case, just a book cover and all the uh, context of metadata. So this concept uh, I, I used and hand waved to is uh, this, this is really a, uh, uh, this is still an important place for controlled vocabulary, especially uh, uh, traditional content owners. And it's a growing importance of uh, folksonomy, social network free tagging. And uh, your system, your managed web, need to accommodate both. So based on that, that's how today's contents and tools are, 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 are aggregated. There's not that many examples yet how tools are aggregated, but, uh, but they're available, YouTube, uh, ingest, and uh, tagging like, uh, like Wikipedia and Amazon. So think of it. All the contents you have ever aggregated are 10 times, 100 times more than what's available in the traditional model. You know, we use the example of music labels versus uh, uh, Rhapsody. There are 31, in other aspects, there are 31 million TV hours being produced every year. In the film festival in the U.S. alone, 10,000 movies are shown every year. So how many of those make theaters? Less than 500, right? There's uh, so many contents have, been, have passed the traditional gates, right? But it's not easily available. And you know what? They are going to find their way on the web. Either traditional media business do that yourself or not. That's just the way it is. And uh, so you really want to build open contents, open communities, and with open tools. You aggregate all of that. Because the days of gatekeepers are, are gone. And it's not anymore about how well you can lock down your contents and you can protect your contents. It's, it's about how easy to get, all, uh, to get to all the contents you have and open contents in your context aggregation destination. And uh, the next level uh, is the semantic linking which I don't think our time uh, allows us. That's really the next stage of sometimes known as the Web 3.0, which is build automations into the process. They uh, monetize. At the end of the day, we're, we're running businesses, right? How do you uh, monetize uh, uh, all of this? So today we're in the economy. A, a, a wonderful study called Longtail, I'm sure many of you have read it, have uh, provided a convincing argument with all the data and, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, analysis that uh, we're really in a post-mass market economy. And that means the next big thing is in a massive amount of small and diverse things. And it has to be done and filtered by, uh, by social network, even though uh, Chris Anderson didn't use that, use that term. So, uh, so that's why the importance of being able to manage your contacts and, and, and filter and market and, and, and distribute, because that's how you, you're going to monetize your contents. Now, the next two aspects of content creation and the production workflow is something that uh, traditional media businesses can actually have a head start and a strong advantage over the pure, um, content, pure context business. The example we're going to uh, 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 use is, let's pretend we're uh, a film studio. Uh, let's take an example of Warner. This could be any one of uh, the content business, uh, uh, any one of our customers. So it could be a brand as a library or uh, Channel 13 WNET is a virtual screening room, which we just started uh, this wonderful project last week. But you can see in this example, let's say we have five cities, creative professionals uh, living in uh, San Jose, graphic, a freelance graphic designer, a, a marketing media acquisition uh, outsourced company in New York. In Burbank, you have the uh, uh, executives for marketing. You have uh, video uh, producers. You have system administrators that simply through a browser just uh, control everybody's access. And you have in the uh, Beijing office another uh, marketing and PR coordinator. So you may not remember all these names, but let's just look at uh, this particular example. And they all work sometimes at home or at work. I will show you how this uh, virtual creative community is done and how workflow is managed. The, the scenario here is that uh, basically there's an urgent, uh, as you can see, 
就是呃呃 promo piece about the brand of the studio that's that's needed right away today tonight for a、uh, joint promotion with、uh, a China mobile operator. This is still done by email. This is an email from the executive to、uh, the New York、uh, company Sophia and copied、uh, Mark, who's the editor. And、uh, Maria, I believe, who is a graphic designer in uh, in uh, San Jose, so they、uh, they all got this email. So this morning, Sophia gets into uh, uh, her office. She sees the email. What does she do? She does a treatment like a marketing professional、uh, would do. She does a treatment, and then she start to aggregate teaser ideas. Most likely, she will use a word processing software like Microsoft Word. But that work environment is enabled by the managed web. So she can, instead of sending email attachment, phone calls, and inform people, she can simply load that up into the managed web, where everybody involved in this process will see it、uh, instantly. As long as they have an IP connected device and a browser, it could be on your、uh, BlackBerry. So before she does that, this、uh, area is empty. The treatment area is empty, and then she simply、uh, ingests. And here is one among any many other places you can start to create the context. For workflow and for content uh, uh, production, so、uh, you know, see, here's the problem right here. You know, you have to remember which folder you put in, right? And you don't have to do that on Google. So,、uh, so she she created this、uh, um, context. It's very simple because they're under time pressure. So this could be again any number of、uh, required field or or or、uh, additional fields. And、uh, once that's done, that is instantly available. To Mark and uh, uh, and uh, Maria and Jesse and Lee to look at this treatment and the teaser ideas. That's what it is. So now, a couple hours later, Mark wakes up uh, in uh, in his West Hollywood home. He logs in. He's at home, so he's working on his kid's computer, which is a window environment. He usually likes to work on Mac, as a lot of editors would. So、uh, in the window environment, of course, he can he can、uh, he has a browser. He can see it. He read it. He understand it. And then you know what? Well,、uh, this was happening before that, couple hours before that. Sophia's staff has already aggregated various uh, uh, contents from the studio: logos, graphics, audios, uh, 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 the recording artists for this production. They're all instantly available the same way as the treatment was available to Mark. And this is now Mark starts production even before he gets to the office. He said, "Well, you know, I, I like to use Final Cut Pro for this particular project, but I'm on a, a window client, so I can't do the production." Well, but I will get a head start by、uh, tagging, creating some context of this production, so that everybody else who's working with me in China, in Burbank, different office in New York, in San,、uh, in, in San Jose can see this. All he has to do is to create this context, his self-service. So once that's done, oh, in fact, he decided, okay, this is urgent, so he wants to put a date. He just decided to add a, a metadata field on the fly. So that's done, and、uh, jump into the car. Half hour later. He's in his、uh, Burbank post-production、uh, environment, where he will have, as you can see, a Mac environment. He logs in same username password, and then this managed web have another very neat feature here, is that、uh, the browser is very intelligent. What Mark just did is that tell me you the browser, tell me Mark what tools are available that is seamlessly integrated with the、uh, the web browser. So here in his environment, he had.、Uh, Final Cut Pro, Adobe, and all the Microsoft Office, and、uh, oh, okay. So I guess we're running out of time. So I'll fast forward this.、Um, and、uh, what does that mean? That means that the browser, who is hosting、uh, the web engine, who is hosting this project, now can be just by one click, load the project into the local editing environment. And the same thing can happen to the contents because you know here is a 1939 movie. Uh, by uh, by Warner, only angels have wings, and、uh, another one is uh, uh, last month's music and lyrics. So because it's love story, that's a, that's a teaser.、Right? There's two love stories, 70 years apart, and black and white to to color. So now he he sees all of that. That may be good enough. He simply、uh, one click launches that into、uh, into his timeline. So、oh, that was a little bit too fast. So he just clicks that、uh, button. Here it is. So The web engine replaces your bin and replaces your production local saved environment. It's all shareable. It's right there. You know, it's a seamless integration. So you put that together, and he does the same thing with、uh, with audio and all of that. And at the same time, as you can see,、um, Maria is working in San Jose, and 